Hi guys, uh, in this video we'll be looking at calculating the angular acceleration of the axle based off the time measurement that we have from the radius of gyration lab. Now uh, what we do is uh, we can look at the motion of the mass and we see that the mass has moved a distance of uh, one meter and we've measured the time taken for that um, uh, motion to happen. So we can write down a few things that we know about uh, this situation. Uh, we know firstly that it's a constant acceleration uh, situation because there's only one single force acting on our system. Uh, second, uh, we know the distance that the component has traveled, which is one meter. We know the initial velocity of our hanger. So this is uh, zero meters per second. Uh, we also um, measure the amount of time taken. And from this information, we'd like to calculate the linear acceleration in order to find the angular acceleration. So we substitute this into the constant acceleration equation, which has these four uh, values. This is uh, S equal to UT plus a half AT squared. We also know the value of U is going to be zero, so UT is equal to zero. We can rearrange this equation uh, for acceleration. And this gives us the acceleration of the component and also the tangential acceleration of the axle that's being rotated. Uh, so we can write the tangential acceleration equal to 2 times the distance, which happens to be 1, uh, divided by t squared. Okay, uh, so our next step now is to use the tangential acceleration to calculate the angular acceleration. So uh, previously we've introduced uh, this equation, so uh, the relationship between angular acceleration and linear acceleration, and that is uh, acceleration equal to angular acceleration times the value r, which is the radial distance. We can substitute a into this equation, and we know the value of r to find alpha. We now have a formula which relates the angular acceleration uh, to the time taken for the experiment to take place. So we now have an uh, equation to find angular acceleration. Uh, in the previous video, we found a formula to find the total torque on the system. And we can use uh, both the value of time and the value of mass to calculate angular acceleration and uh, torque respectively. Now, if we do a plot of torque versus angular acceleration, um, we should be able to find a straight line graph which links these two equations together, these two values. Um, so we'll plot your experimental results somewhat like this. 
you'll have your sum of torque, which you've calculated from your mass. You'll have your angular acceleration, uh, measured in radians per second squared. And you'll be able to plot um, your value of sum of torque against a certain value of angular acceleration. I recommend that you use Excel for this. Uh, also with Excel, uh, you can create something called a, a trend line. Um, and with a trend line, you can force the trend line to go through the origin and mark a trend line which goes through. Um, now, the gradient of this curve, of this line, should be the mass moment of inertia for your, for your component. Uh, this is because of our equation, the sum of torque is equal to I, which is our mass moment of inertia, times alpha. This is our Y value, or Y axis equal to the gradient times the value on our x axis. So it's in y equals mx uh, form. Uh, so hopefully this gives you some guidance for the calculations needed for the experiment. Thank you.